past fatal heart impact, past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions. Back on mass, grab reactions, jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember, you're discreet now. Get ready for the Alrighty. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Kiru Show here. And now. Whenever we last left off with this series, we had Deku. And, well, quite a bit of things have happened. Now, in the last part, Deku, he was training with the female Todoroki. And they ran into Denki, who he continued to talk to Deku about the Meta Liberation Army and their idea for a world where people can use their quirks freely. Now, this was very interesting to Deku. With the way he has grown up in his life and with the way things currently are in society, two things are going to happen in the near future, and Deku is well aware of it. The way Hero Society is currently going, it might collapse. And option B. Hero Society will completely fall apart. And whenever it is rebuilt, it may not be the exact same. Now, Deku, yeah. He was very curious about this offer. Going down to the docks later the night, or later that night, to see exactly what's going on with the Meta Liberation Army. Now, Deku talked to Todoroki about this, and she herself was very interested in this idea, except for the opposite reason. Now, with that being said, we do actually have later that night, where Deku he did pick up Todoroki and the two did sneak off to the docks. Now, with that we actually have Deku, who he is calling Denki. Now, Denki, he would have actually talked to Deku. Whenever he did pick up his phone. Yo, hello? Uh, Denki? Oh, hey. Zuku, right? Yeah, it's me. Perfect. Is this meeting thing still happening? Oh, yeah, we're all down here right now. Now, Denki would just give Deku a specific set of instructions and telling him what he does need to do. Now, Deku, he would listen. And we actually have where Deku, him and Todoroki, they do land nearby the docks and continue to walk in, sneaking their way throughout the entire area, as we actually do have where Deku, he and Todoroki have to be careful. This place is completely dead silent. It's unusual for this time of night. And it's very weird. Are there supposed to be people unloading ships here? Or isn't this supposed to be like maintenance workers and security guards? The security guards are still around, but it's just one wrong move and they'll be caught. No. Deku, he is just trying to think. Okay. This is going to be a lot harder than he thought. No. Deku, he, and Todoroki, they do really start to sneak around a bit. And you do have where Deku does eventually get caught by a security guard. Now, a few things could have happened here. The security guard, he walked around the corner and saw Deku and Todoroki. And Deku, yeah. The whole lost young couple wouldn't happen or excuse wouldn't happen here. Since they really shouldn't be here, a lot of things shouldn't be happening here. And the fact is the two are basically trespassing. Now. The security guard, he was very annoyed, talking about how these young, well, the young two shouldn't be right here. And you do actually have Deku who he was trying to think, as him and Todoroki were standing there. Really, we shouldn't be here? Deku was going to bring his hand up to his head, and holding up the all symbol, talking about how they're exactly what they need to be. Now, Deku he did just stand there frozen, wondering if this would work. And you do actually have where the security guard, he just stared at Deku for a minute. 
before he does Gadoop, move his arm. Now, Deku does get ready with his feathers. Two, go on the offensive in case the man does reach for his gunner's radio. Surprise of the man does go to bring his hand up and directly onto his forehead. As he just told Deku that, it's quite a surprise to see a member here this late. Huh? Yeah, about that. I was looking for the meeting. Oh, I see, I see. You're lucky it's me on patrol then. A lot of us guys are here tonight. We're on shift. So, the man gave me Deku directions. As Deku, he does thank the man and go to leave. No. The man does talk about how Deku needs to avoid these people. Him listing off a few people in a few certain areas. Talking about how they aren't exactly on their side. Now, Deku, he would listen. We do actually have Deku and Todoroki, they do sneak into a warehouse down in this area. Now, you do actually have inside. Where Deku, he did just have to bring his hand up and make the symbol once more to get in. Now, it was very interesting. As we do actually currently have where a bunch of people are all standing around. And somebody they are currently up on stage. This being where Deku, he is just trying to think. Okay, there's a lot of people here. So, what could they do? This whole idea is very weird, but from what his dad's told him, it's also very interesting. So if this place, it really is just full of people who wish for a better world, maybe he can talk to his dad about it. Tell him that they're not really so bad. However, there's also the opposite idea. If these people really are just a bunch of crazy lunatics, and this is a whole League of Villains scenario, or a giant group of people who are evil scenario then he really doesn't want to be involved in it. He'll give his dad the address and time and place of the next meeting. And heroes, we will just take them all down. Now, we do actually have a man, he's up on stage. And he's telling everybody about what's going to be happening. Now, Deku is watching the man. As he's announcing to people that tonight... All of them are now members of the Meta Liberation Army. And that, tonight, is going to be very simple. They will have to go through a series of tests and show off their prowess with their powers. They want to see them liberate themselves from what society has deemed the normal. And if they all do fail to do so, or they do not wish to use their powers, then they must leave. Now, Deku does hear about that. And he does realize a few things. That's not good. Now, he is just wondering. His two powers, his face, his name. He didn't really think this completely through, did he? He has a rabbit quirk and a bird quirk. So, this is not good. Now, you do actually have where everybody they do get split up into groups. And yeah, Deku and Todoroki are both in the same category. As we do have after a bunch of groups have already run certain tests, they get moved to the next and we do actually currently have Deku and Todoroki. Where their group are informed that they will have to move using their quirks about, let's just say 500 meters. Now, Deku, yeah. He is just getting ready. And everyone they do just watch him. Since he has the wings. However, there's also a guy with what they believe to be at least some form of engines in his legs. Now, this is not Tenya Ida. Anyways. Now, Deku does just get ready. As so do multiple other people. As they are announced to run. And Deku does quickly start to blitz his way across the area. Now. Deku is the first one across as everybody there's still at least either halfway or two thirds of the way. And you do actually have where Todoroki, she does come flying in directly behind Deku. Now, it was quite interesting. As they, somebody, they do come walking up. And they're quite curious. Now, Deku would turn to this person since they were the man who were on stage. 
Excuse me, young man. Yes, sir? Or that quirk is very interesting. And your abilities? They're mutations, correct? Yes. Fascinating. Your wings? What exactly can they do besides fly? Oh, well, and your other quirk. Your ears. Your legs. I'm interested to know. Would you happen to be the son of the number three in fourth hero? Oh, uh, uh about that. You see, you may have been having me mistaken with somebody else. Hmm? Young man, don't lie to me. Now, the man is going to bring his hand up. And echo his wings, they do immediately go back to folding out. As the man, he does just go to bring up his hand to tell him that it's alright. Hmm? What? It's alright, young man. We don't really blame you. You wish to get away from that form of society, correct? It must be exhausting having parents like yours. Ah, <sighs> I mean it is, yes, but still. I thought you were going to kill me. Hmm? Young man, we have no need to kill you. Unless, of course, you are not our ally. Tell me. With your particular quirk, do people treat you like your father? Hmm? What? Do people treat you like your father? Do they treat you like your mother? Do they wish for you not to use it? Your powers, your abilities. I'm assuming with your father's quirk, you can do the same thing, correct? Uh, you mean mine? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Now, Deku and the man are talking. And Deku just finds it to be quite fascinating. His concern about being caught, it just washed away. These people, they're not comparing him to his parents. They're not. They're just seeing him for him. Now, Deku, he does find that to be quite interesting. People, they do praise him and talk about how his abilities are strong. But they aren't trying to smother him. They aren't trying to ridicule him. They aren't trying to compare him. Now, Deku, yeah, he does go through more tests. And we actually have where, after everything is said and done, everybody they are assigned at least a rank in the army. And you do actually have where somebody they do go to call a name. Now, everybody is all quite surprised. Whenever Deku does come flying on stage, and... They do at least hear his name. Izuku Takami. Now, Deku, yeah. He is just standing on stage as people there looking up towards him. Takami. Isn't that the number two hero's last, well, the number three hero's last name? And his wings. That's his kid. Now, Deku, he is just told to say a few words to encourage his fellow recruits. Now, Deku does just go to open his mouth, talking about how his dad dreams of a better society, where people and heroes, they'd have too much free time on their hands. However, Deku, he does understand that part of his dad's dream. He also does share his own. All his life, he's been compared to his parents, and with his strange powers, people, they really don't see him for him. Now, we do actually have in the crowd, or some way they do hear Deku talking. Now, we actually do have where Deku does go to reach his hand out, and some way they do come flying up on stage. As you do actually have Todoroki with a feather attached to her shirt. Now, as the person did come flying up, Deku, he immediately did go to bring up his hand, talking about how this is the number two hero's daughter. As everyone needed to just stare at the two, they are going to hold the mic up and in front of Todoroki's face. I'm sure you have a few things to say about your father, don't you? No. Todoroki should just stare at Deku. And that expression he does have, it's 
Well, a smile. But how can he sound so serious at the same time? Now, Todoroki Shio's gonna grab the mic from Neku's hand. As Shio's actually grab onto his own, and they're gonna pull it over in front of her face. I do have a few words to say. All of you know my father, Endeavor. He's not a good man. He claims to be a hero. However, growing up the way I was taught, he tried to force me to use my quirk. And I hate him for it. He was so focused on being remembered instead of being a good father to his kids. And I do sympathize with your cause. However, for a different reason. I believe that people, they shouldn't just have the ability to use their quirks when they want. They also should have the ability to not use them if wanted to. Does that make sense to everyone here? No. She does just turn back towards Deku. And Deku does just look at her. As she does just do one thing. She does lean back forwards, telling them that she is on their side. They both are. Now, she's just going to bring up both of their hands and hold the microphone. As everyone, they do continue to start cheering. Now, we actually do have inside the crowd. Where, Denki, a lot of things are going through this boy's head. He unknowingly just recruited the number two and three's kids. That is insane to him. Now, he's just trying to wonder, should he mention this? Should he tell the leader or whoever's in charge here that this was because of him? Would he get a promotion? Hmm. Now, with that being said, the meeting is dismissed. We do actually have where everybody they do start to disperse. Now, by this time, security has thinned out quite a bit. And many men have gone home. Now, everybody they are leaving. And we actually have where Denki had to go to catch up with Deku and Todoroki. Since they were talking with some big people in the organization. Now, we do actually have where Denki, he does just ask the two straight up why they never told him that they were the number or they were their parents were in the top 10. Huh? I mean, I thought it was obvious. Yes, well, I barely met you earlier today. <laughs> I, I get that, but it's just. I'm sorry, that's crazy to me, you know? Exactly why is it crazy to you? Because I didn't expect it at all. Like, my friends are never going to believe this. But hey, do you think you can put in a good word for me since you're here? I mean, I can try, but this place is actually pretty cool. I know, right? Now, Denki he does continue to talk with Deku. And you do actually have... Todoroki, she can tell that he's more comfortable here than anywhere else. At school, there's that sour expression he does so aware. He tries to hide it behind something else. It can't really be best described as a smile. But tonight, he did actually smile for once. So is he in a similar boat to her? His life may be different, but it's similar. Now, we actually do have where Deku and Todoroki they do go to leave. And yeah, they do get back to the Endeavor household. About 30 minutes later, where Deku, after dropping her off and going to turn to leave, she actually has to go to reach out and grab him by, well, let's just say one of his feathers. Now, Deku does turn around quite confused. What's up? Hmm? I wish to talk to you. Really? That's out of character for you? Is it now? Kind of. What's up? 
Well, I was happy to go there. Hmm? Were you? Yes, I was. It feels good to talk about it. The image everyone does have of my father being the number two hero. They think that he's a good man. But he's not. Not to you, not to your siblings. No. Controlling. He's overwhelming sometimes, and I just don't like it. Constantly telling me to use my power. What he did to my family. What he did to all of us. Honestly, if Hero Society didn't exist, I don't think a lot of it would have happened. Do you? I don't. No. The two, they're still talking about this. As never, he does actually come walking out. And, yeah. The moment Toroki she does turn her head to see Endeavor, you do actually have where Deku to actually try and turn it to look that direction. You do actually have where Toroki should actually go to grab Deku by his face and turn it back towards him. Her. And she'd actually go to kiss Deku. Now, Deku was actually taken by surprise. As he'd go to step backwards as she just hold on to his shirt. And Deku, he did actually hear Endeavor start to at least go off on Todoroki. Now, Endeavor, yeah. Deku did turn his head to see the man, who is currently sparking with fire. Endeavor shouting that he shouldn't be here. Cool your jets, I was just leaving. Deku trying to stay composed. He didn't expect that. Holy shit. That was crazy. Is he gonna die? He feels like he's going to die. No. Todoroki, she does a step in front of Deku. Telling Endeavor that this is her boyfriend. No. Deku was quite alarmed to hear those words. As you actually where Toroki shows go to turn around and directly go to pull Deku into a hug, whispering to him to play along, and that she'll call him later. Now, Deku, he does somewhat start to pick up on what's going on. Okay, so the two just snuck out late at night. This is a good excuse, yeah. Deku wrapping his arms around her and talking about how the two, they've been dating for a little bit of time. Endeavor, he's, well, just annoyed at this. Talking about how Shoto, she shouldn't have a boyfriend. And she just talk about how she would never have told him if he didn't just catch them red-handed. Now, Endeavor is very annoyed. Exactly what was going on tonight. And why was she gone? Now, Turkey she just going to head towards her room. As Endeavor, he does start to make his way closer to Deku and talk about how he wants to talk to the young man. Deku is just going to bring up his hands and go to put up two fingers. As he does just, well, say later, and they're going to quickly fly away. Now, Endeavor, he is very annoyed. As he does still try to talk to Shoto about exactly what she was doing. Now, with that being said, we do actually have later, where Todoroki shows at least talk to Deku. And yeah, she does fill him in on exactly why she did everything that she did just that she did just do. With the fact that their parents are pro heroes, the idea of sneaking out at night and joining the army, it would be a bad idea for them to hear. How if their parents do just think that they're sneaking out at night? And, well, going out to see a girl or a boy, it's a lot easier to explain. They can be a little bit less secretive about their life, since technically they do spend time together. Along with that, with how Endeavor did react as his seeing Deku again, and late at night this time, it was a perfect idea. So that's why you kissed me? Oh yeah, you should see the look on his face. He's still angry now. <laughs> Maybe, but still. Next time, can you warn me about a plane like that? I mean, hey. I don't necessarily think that you mind it, did you? No, not at all. It was just... 
Very surprising. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.